do you think Eddie Howe could be a good a good route to yeah, go I down? Think, to I think he's one of the, the perfect candidates. Perfect. I mean, I mean, I'm shocked that he's still out of work, if mm. I'm honest, because what he did at Bournemouth I thought was was remarkable in terms of where he took him, bottom of League Two, nearly going out of business, all the way to the Premier League. I mean, that is fantastic. So I think short term and I think that's the, the, the issue they're going to have is that someone like Eddie Howe I don't think he's going to want to be a stepping stone I think he's going to want to go there with some guarantees that he's going to have a, a, an amount of time there to you know, I mean, bring in the, the players that they want but I think he would be the perfect kind of stopgap in terms of you can't go out and sign the big players I mean people are getting carried away they are in a relegation battle and I think he'd be perfect for that so I really like Eddie Howe I think he's such an underrated coach and I think the work that he did at Bournemouth was Fantastic. so underrated two, as you mentioned the there League. League 2 to Premier you have to be a seriously talented coach to what 3 promotions then 16th, 9th, 12th, 14th in the Premier League all while playing really good football mm. and look the last season at Bournemouth it, it didn't go right I they think the re- injuries, I, I think yeah, yeah, and the recruitment they spent a big money on, on look think about Jordan sure, Knife came in for big Solanke money Dominic Solanke money. 20 mil big money in plays that didn't really do it I, I just don't think that one poor season at Bournemouth can undo what seven eight years of really really Absolutely good ridiculous work ridiculous they think that's the, that's the case 100% really good coach young manager plays good football improves players has been there and done it in terms of getting a team out of that relegation zone do you think that um, uh, would be a good a good appointment Laura? has a good connection of course with Callum Wilson um, yeah. Ryan Fraser don't think that relationship towards the end no. went very well well Callum Ryan Fraser kind of went rogue on him didn't he yeah he d- we wouldn't sign a new contract wasn't no, it yeah. or, or I'll tell you what it was he wouldn't play after lock down that yeah. was it when they because the really contract needed. situation yeah and then they got relegated um like i think he's a, a brilliant coach i've i've worked a lot with bournemouth and um i've only got good things to say about eddie howe mm. and and the, the feedback that you get from the players that he manages as well is that he's got a real way with them so um i would love to see him back in management i hope he's having a nice a nice break because i can't imagine the sort of stress that you'd be under um especially a club like bournemouth it's not like they've got loads of money to spend on on, on massive players and if you do spend that money and it doesn't go well mm. what what do you do after that mm. Um, last time someone's texting and said last time Eddie Howe was in a relegation battle um, he got relegated yeah but there's lots of if you it's so simple to say that isn't yeah. it it's so simple to say oh they just got relegated but there's lots of different factors I remember them going through it with injuries so much it took um, a team from League 2 yeah. about to go out of business they had no right to be there in the first place exactly to, to the Premier League I mean that is in itself is a story so I think he's more than mm. qualified to mm. be a, certainly a candidate for this job yeah um, yeah. that's the story by exclusive by Darren Lewis in the uh, in the mirror this morning how in the frame for Newcastle another Craig Hope Newcastle exclusive on the back of the mail this morning he's reporting Newcastle captain Jamal Lascelles and teammate Isaac Hayden had to be pulled apart by staff um, as they were, uh, this is after the defeat by Spurs the pair were involved in a furious row in the wake of the defeat staff were forced to jump in when they went head to head and shoves were exchanged in the tunnel area Sports Mail also understands that some players later voiced their unhappiness with Steve Bruce's tactics in the dressing room on a day that was supposed to celebrate the club's new sandy led ownership sources have described how infighting and player resentment towards Bruce intensified um, Darren if you're a Newcastle fan and you read that two senior players are having a bust up is that a serious concern or do these things happen all the time at other clubs we just don't hear about it as much yeah I mean listen for whatever reason there's a, there's a rat in that dressing room because everything at St James's Park seems to get out absolutely everything and that shouldn't happen that shouldn't be the case I mean there's been several bust ups in teams that I played for that would never get out because you're a tight knit group and these things happen more often than not Sam I'm telling you in terms of after games even in training things like it might be a little five a side someone puts a bad tackle yeah all hell breaks loose. So it's not a concern it's happening, it's a concern that, a concern Craig that, keeps, get, that keeps getting has out. on the back of the mail this morning. But also as well, they're saying there that they're, they're upset about Steve Bruce's tax and all that. I think some of them players now are hiding behind that because they know Steve Bruce is in trouble and that he's potentially going to be going out the door. Mm. They need to look at their own performances. I mean, LaSalle's at the weekend was awful. It was absolutely terrible. They're defending this season has been embarrassing. It's been, it's been a shambles. Yeah. So the fact that he's going, Steve Bruce, it's an easy target. So you go, ah, mm. oh, we're not happy about this because of his, his tactics. Yeah. He's got to put his performances mm. on the pitch. You'd as well. So, Craig Hope, great journalism, you have to say, because that is your job as a journalist. Yeah. If you're getting that information, you're managing to, to someone's trusting you and they know what's going to happen with that information. That is great journalism. I would be tearing my hair out if, I, if it were my team and if I were the manager and it, I was on the inside, I'd be tearing my hair out and I, I feel like it would create more division because mm. when these kind of things seep out into the media, I'm, I imagine you'll start, if that happened here, 
and something yeah. seeped out about how Sam Allard goes on five dates a week. We'd be like, how? Who is <laughs> who's who is releasing that? Yeah. that? Yeah. And then it creates this false kind information of, as well. False information, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but it creates yeah, six, this Laura, kind not of, five. Everyone, uh, it's almost like sabotage from within, isn't it? Looking at each other, saying, "What's going on?" <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's poor because, as I said, in a football club, it should stay in house in terms, and then you sort out, you deal with it, you move on. But as I said, every single time that seems to happen at Newcastle, it how comes do you stop up. it though? Have you ever been in a club where there have been stories coming out? How how does is it up to the manager to stop it? Does the chairman get involved? Well, you've got to start questioning the characters in the dressing room first mm. and foremost because that's where it comes from. And I get it in terms of sometimes something might happen at training, someone might go home and tell I know, a relative or one of their friends, then it kind of spirals mm. out of control. But as I said, this doesn't come out in most football clubs. But mm. everything at Newcastle at the minute seems to get out. You know what though? I would. There's a part of me that thinks I'm I'm glad that there's tempers flaring in there because you want that you don't want them to have a performance like they did at the weekend and go ah oh, that's acceptable mm. you want them to be angry with each mm. other and perhaps that will create some sort of a change and is that what happens Darren coming off the bad performance at the weekend everyone's arguing at least it kind of galvanises you a bit you hope bit, you, you hope and yeah of course it does when you kind of you know, I mean, tear, tear strips off each other in terms of the performance the next week you go out and you think well I'm not going to let him talk to me like that again so I'm going to put a performance mm. in but I just don't sense that in this dressing room, unfortunately, because it's such a unique position, just been taken over. The managers on thin ice, it it, it gives the players an excuse. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot going on. Oh, that's why we've not put the performances in. This is a perfect breeding ground, by the way, for a complete division within that team, not just within the players, but the management levels, the coaches. Everyone's almost going to be looking at themselves thinking, right, it's, it's me against the world. I'm out yeah. for myself. It's, it's become almost a, a situation that's been allowed to boil over because... There's not clarity. This takeover has happened so quickly. There obviously wasn't ready, weren't ready for it to no. be happening this quickly. Otherwise, perhaps it'd be a bit clearer. Amanda Staley promised Steve Bruce clarity on mm. his position. There's no clarity there by the looks of things. We were told by certain people in the media, there were reports saying he's not going to be in charge mm. for that Spurs game. Then he was in charge. But, but sorry, Laura, even the Graham Jones thing, that's got to be unsettling. His, one of his coaching staff potentially could be the manager. Yeah. That, that, that would unsettle me as well. Mm. It's not, it's not going to be good for a club who are trying to fight against relegation. No. They've got difficult, difficult fixtures coming up as well. Someone almost needs to take the whole situation by the scruff of the neck and say, right, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. So everyone, including the players, has a clear path. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.